We got a problem here, and it's more than just Alvin screaming Punisher. When life begins to suck, who's reporting it? Luckily, you got two friends who you won't forget. Coming live, Alvin and friend on survival. Laughing nonstop, case drops on a cycle. Louder than intrusive thoughts off an iPhone. How they make the world seem bright with the lights off? AFs, it might as well stay up. Lies being told, like that dinosaur BS. Magnifying glass to the ground if they don't see us. Having the time, roasting your favorite pizza. Bougie ain't an option, it's the way. Take it to the grave, add moving to the place. You already know when they take the case. Laugh the pain away, it's affirmative murder. Hello, and welcome to another affirmative murder mini sode. I'm Alvin Williams, joined as always by my partner in true crime, Francel Evans. What up, man? None, man. What is going on? Not much, brother. Uh, we are joining people serendipitously. We had hopped on. We had a very exciting oh, yeah. thing that we were planning on doing. It fell through, hopefully not completely, because I was excited to do it. Um, we, we should probably leave it at that, because yeah. I don't want to say anything rude in case it has now happened, <laughs> and then we look crazy. So yeah. um, we are here. We're going to read some emails. It's been a while. Affirmative murder at gmail.com. TFTH, get those in, people. We cannot have many souls without your input, without your um, your backbone and your stories and your life. So, like, we need those. It's the lifeblood of the many souls. So get them in. Affirmative murder at gmail.com. TFTH, Fran. Uh, as always, I know you love the many souls. What are you looking for, you know, to uh, satisfy your palate this episode? Um, this episode, let's see, um, something, hmm, something, uh, a little bit of twists and turns in it, just a little bit of advice emails. Oh, I don't know if we have any advice emails, okay. even though we do, uh, do a fantastic job at those, if I, if I might say so myself, as a matter of fact, yeah. friend, let's go ahead and answer a follow up. Okay. To an email that we got, uh, sent in. We to answer us or they advice. answer? We answered them. They've okay, responded gotcha. to give us an update on what happened. Got gotcha. you. Okay. 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 This so is. Can, can you refresh my memory on what? Yes. This okay. was a, from our listener, the uh, our awesome listener who was very transparent, Lashonda, who reached out to us to let us know that she was in a bit of a situation. She okay. was seeing okay. somebody. Yeah. And they hadn't made it a fish yet. And you know, we we gave her some advice, and now she's responded back to us. Got gotcha. you. Okay. So this is from Lashonda. Let's kick things off with this one. I'm glad you, you jogged my memory. We can kick things off properly. With some follow, so now people can hear what what happens when we give advice. Yeah. So this is from Lashonda. It says, "Hey fellas, it's Lashonda. Thank you all for reading my email on the podcast. It's cool being able to reach out to people that you admire and to get solid advice on top of it. Appreciate y'all. I took the advice, but I got impatient and asked him what is up with us on the okay. phone. LOL. Ooh, okay. Yeah, she got right to business. I like it. She uh, again, Lashonda stands on business. Yeah, and I appreciate that." Um, when she asked him, he said he wanted to be in a relationship with me. And then we had a more in-depth conversation Okay. when we saw each other. So they had a more in-depth conversation gotcha. in person. Good. So the Good. phone call sparked it. He was like, girl, let's, let's, let's go get some drinks. Let's talk this out, which yeah. is solid on his end. Um, so yeah, we're together and we have a trip planned to new Orleans in September, his first time. I would have asked my pops, but he's big toxic with relationships, LOL. So thanks. So thank y'all again. LaShonda, you are very welcome. Glad to hear that, you know. <laughs> hey, listen, in a roundabout way, we kind of were the catalyst for getting you guys into a relationship. So your anniversary is now our anniversary. We appreciate yeah. you, and we hope that you guys go the distance. Um, so that's pretty cool. I think, again, I think we gave some pretty great advice to LaShonda, if I do say yeah. so myself. I, lo I love that. Objective. I love the outcome of that story. Uh, yeah, beautiful. Beautiful. I think that um, now we can say that what if we get, there's a what if to this where it's like what if you didn't write into us didn't ask us those questions we didn't answer those questions and you didn't make that move on ask, asking your your man now those questions where would you guys relationship be at this you might point? still be in no man's land literally yeah. Um, so, you know, uh, I think that that's fantastic. You, you know, uh, boot up, boot up. I think that's fantastic. And that you guys are loving and kissing each other and holding hands publicly. And, and you might've been doing that before because dudes are notorious, um, for doing stuff like that. Shout out to Chapel Roan and the song casual. Um, yeah, but I think that that's fantastic. I'm glad that you guys are, you know, comedicado and locked in and everything. And I'm appreciative and happy about whatever part we played in giving you those, the kick in the butt to go 
confront him. Yeah. And ask him, what's the deal? What's so, the deal? Uh, again, affirmative murder at gmail.com, TFTH. If you would like advice, if you're seeking advice from us, we would love to do that. As a matter of fact, I will go even further. If there's some kind of way that we can figure out a way to make this a live phone call Ooh, situation sometimes, whether okay. we're calling you guys, if you guys, hey, you know, call me and so that we call you while we're potting so we don't have to figure out time scheduling in that kind of way. And if you, if you have an advice question that you'd like to ask, we can call you and then we can have a conversation live on the podcast, giving fun. you advice live in the moment. I'm just putting it out there. Yeah. That'd so be if fun. you want a, that caveat send it in an email and say that's something you might be open to leave your email drop your digits and then maybe we'll call you live while we're podcasting and you can end up asking your advice asking for your whatever advice you have in your life live on the podcast yeah it could be anything anything you don't have to be relationship it doesn't have to be relationship related it could be anything we are qualified in nothing which makes us qualified in answer and giving you advice on anything everything you know a master of none is a specialist in everything or however yeah. that quote goes so, um, yeah, uh, affirmative murder at gmail.com, TFTH, get them in. But moving on, we just actually, this email is actually fresh, hot off the presses since we've been recording. It actually came in. So I, okay. I, I proofread this. I don't know where it's going to go. And we're going to keep it light and we're going to see how it goes, you know. And, and if, if, it's, if it's a slanderous email or whatever, we're going to find out in real time. That's how I like it. High stakes. Um, Please come this, on, just fucking bashes. Yeah, you guys like are that. trash. Stop recording. Stop take the, recording. Take the right equipment now. back to Guitar <laughs> Center. Wrap it up. Go get a day job. Um, this email, I'm not going to say who it's from because it it doesn't say at the top if I can or not. It says, "Dear Alvin and Fran, greetings. I heard Alvin on Wine and Crime on an older episode and decided to check out you two. I am thoroughly glad that I did. If Alvin hadn't been on that show." He wouldn't have led me here to hear Fran's hot take on dinosaurs and cemeteries. Hmm. I've binged every episode and I'm caught up. I have many stories since I'm what Alvin would consider old at 55 years of age. And listen, you know, I've caught some flags in the past. No, I think that I just, I think I've said something like innocuous of like, you know, huh? No, nah, he, heat is you know, Come on, these old people can't drop any real heat. They're wow. old. Um, osteoporosis and whatnot. Um, but I think I said something innocuous like, you know, when you're a little older up there, like 50, you know, 55. I think I said something like that. Again, I'm 32 years old. So relatively, yeah. I'm not saying my mom is an old woman, but mm -hmm. she's old. She's old enough to have a 32 year old son. So she's older. She's older to me. And my yeah. mom's 52. So I'm not saying. Is she? Yeah, and she looks great. And she looks goes amazing. out and she has she's she's great. I'm not saying 55 is like some decrepit person. I'm just saying relative to me it's 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 older. Like yeah. I don't know, man. I don't want any beef. Yeah. And you guys probably don't want any beef either cuz it probably upsets your tummy cuz you guys are old. So what um, is the the term over the hill? What is what is the meaning behind that that term? Over the hill? Let's not yeah. get into it cuz if you were to ask me what the cutoff age for over the hill is, I would say after 50 around 55 um, i thought 50 so, was i thought that was the age over the hill yeah you're you're on the other side you're of on the side what of the, hill. the at life expectancy is i think over yeah. the hill i think that's what that means it's the hill of life okay i think you're like at least you're ha you're you're over halfway there you're 50 yeah. you don't have 50 years left statistically so you're over the hill hell i'm 32 i'm over the hill i might be at the top of the hill i might be king of the hill right now 32 i don't know if that's I'm why that's why people come at you because you can't say that I can't say what. You can't come over here and say, you don't even have 50 le years left. So If you're 55 like, years old, it is statistically unlikely that you have 50 years left. Whatever. There's a lady who's like 118 right now. I knew you were going to bring this up. She's 115 <laughs> years old. And what kind of <laughs> life do you think? Th did they do a video expose on her or was this, or was this just an article in a newspaper? Because I think it was just an article, article in a newspaper. It was an article in a newspaper. If you go to her house, I would love to see her on camera. And if she's anything other than like... Oh, well, I, if it's anything other than that, Come she's on. gardening or, you know, running marathons or something. God bless her. But it, I would never want to live to be 115 years old. That sounds like prison. That's life prison <laughs> to me. 115 years old. Now you're getting into, you might have grandchildren who have passed away. Yeah. How? Come did, on. We, we had this conversation. It does get a little dark. Yeah, that's what I'm but, saying. You can't outlive the grandbabies, man. But if what if not, though? The family's happy. You're still around. What family? You're still around that. <laughs> what family is I'm happy? Saying, I'm, saying if everybody, I, but I'm saying people still, like, if your family's still around, everybody's happy. Your, your great, great, great grandkids get to experience you. 
the, in a oh, way experience the demon that lives in their uh How they their don't uncle's know that. basement. They don't know that. They're scared bro, to go down. They're there? not keeping. They're not keeping that lady in the basement, bro. Where is she? She got a little room in a in a in the living room. <laughs> And all the what? kids are scared to go in the living room because there's like all kind of machines beeping and weird stuff bro, happening. She's, she's not, watching murder. She's not she wrote. Up to machines. She's not. She's not fucking on life support, bro. She's fine. She may be bedridden, but she's fine. If I'm five years old, seeing a 115 year old person in the house, I'm no, avoiding, creepy. I'm avoiding that room. Not, but still, she's still there, clinging to life, just like clutching life, never, not wanting to let go. What are we holding on for? But how do you? But how do you know that? It's just her body just not, hasn't gave up yet. That has nothing to do with. So she's her. trapped. So she's, she's just like. You, 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 so I'm she, not saying you she's trapped. I'm saying that the body. She's no. trapped. She wants, I'm not saying she's trapped. She wants not, the sweet saying, release of no, death so bad. No, no, no. I'm not saying that. And she is stuck on this no. plane of existence, is what you're saying? I'm saying her body just hasn't given up yet. I mean, at 118 years old, I would go like, all right, this is this is, this is is past enough. <laughs> like, I don't know what else I'm. Wow. What, what else am I here for? Yeah. I get it. Beam me up, Scotty. Yeah, let me go. Yeah, let me go. I, but, I told you I hit a hundo. Hundo, and I'm 101. I'm like, all right, bro. This, yeah, we think, come on. I'm overachieving this. I didn't <laughs> want to do this. <laughs> all right. So back to this person's email with their sassy comment about being 55. God bless you. I, you know, I, 55 I, is not old. 55 is not old at all. And whatever comment I made that's making people bring this little sassy energy to me, I apologize for it. You know what I mean? I, didn't, I wasn't trying to call anybody old, but you're older than me. You are quite literally old enough to be my mom. And that's not come a bad on. thing. I what? think old. I think old has a... Come on. What? No, it's not I say older than me. I'm just oh, saying, saying I don't think the term old is, is bad. insulting. It doesn't, yeah, it's not insulting. People I don't know take people. it personal when you come at their mortality, I guess, bro. I don't know. I guess. Man. If it's not old, then you shouldn't feel any reason to say anything to me. But in certain perspectives, everybody's old. It's, it's relative. Everybody. You know what? My kids call 15 me year, Exactly. And 15-year-old kids call me sir, OG, big homie, yeah. things that I don't want to be called because when I go to dinner, I'm looking at my mom to pay the bill. Yeah. I'm a camp, just a little baby. Yeah. So it's all relative. You know, when my son is born, I'll be 32 years older than him. That's old. Yeah. yeah. That's old. I'm 32 years older than him. That's old. And somebody that's 20 years older than me is older than me and my elder. I'm not saying you're elderly. But you are my elder, and I will say yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, and respectfully, and all these things. That's how I will treat you, and you sh- you earn that. Yeah. Everybody over 45, 50, you earn my respect through your age. Now, you can lose it real quickly if you, you know, you come, come you being disrespectfully. But yeah. off the bat, you're over 50 years old, I'm treating you like my elder. And that's not an insult. Unless I said something about you having osteoporosis or something like that, I might have, in tongue in cheek, I might have said something tongue in cheek. I don't know. Sometimes I'm just talking, I don't even know where my brain is going half the time. I think Stephen A. Smith is like 55. He's on TV every damn day. His hair yeah. is still black. It's receding, but it's still black. <laughs> and he seems like he's doing great. He's doing now, all right. <laughs> so now, back to it. Here's this person's story. When I was in grade school, about fourth grade, we lived in a condo complex. It was comprised of two buildings. Each building had three wings and met in the center where the elevators were. It's important to note that I was born in Mexico and immigrated to the U.S. when I was five years old, just in time for, the, for kindergarten. The reason I mention this is so that you may understand that my parents spoke very little English and we were from a very oh, small farm town. So the Chicago suburbs were big city living for us at the time. Also to understand that the police and government authority is viewed differently where we come from. Back to the story. We were in our condo when we heard a ruckus in the main elevator hallway. Like a muffled scream for help and some banging around. When we stepped out to see what was going on, a woman was being choked by her adult son. It was a neighbor we... Yeah, that's crazy. It was a neighbor we saw often with her son and his small dog. He was special needs and may have been autistic. I'm not sure since I was young and back in the day, the late 70s, people didn't really share with uh, what challenges people may have been going through. Gladly today, we support each other in much healthier ways. Anyhow, my father and two uncles went to aid the woman. Her son was strong. His dog was yapping hysterically because he perceived that his owner was being attacked. The funny part is that my father was in his boxers and he had been ready for bed, and my uncles were staying the night as they were in 
as they were in from out of town. The doggy clamped onto my father's boxers in the back. Ooh, Ooh in the back. <laughs> been ass. Yeah, 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 been ass. <laughs> That's your ass, Mr. Postman. <laughs> um, imagine the sight of him strong armed the young man to help the woman with a dog hanging from his rear end. The moment was both scary and funny, which I'm, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, you know, a little dog hanging onto some cheeks. Someone had called the police. We didn't know we could do that. <laughs> I guess that Call says the a police? lot about that says a lot about the uh, what are they, the wow, federales in yeah. Mexico? Where like you just call them for dis- domestic disturbances. Um, and when they arrived, they helped subdue the son. It turns out that the woman was getting elderly, and they were having to leave their condo since she probably needed care herself and could no longer care for her adult son. She told him that they'd be moving and he became upset. Mm. And, and that is when he began to choke her. My wow. father passed in 2009 and I miss him every day. He was funny, kind and affectionate as a person who made us laugh in our guts and our hearts. Sometime in the future, I'll send in the story of how he fooled an entire town into thinking he was a priest. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. Scammer. Uh, lastly, thank you for being so open and I'm glad I joined the Patreon. Shout out to you. Um, I listen to many podcasts, but you're the only podcast that inspired me to join your Patreon. Shout out to you. Double shout out to you. Please continue with your podcast and I'm happy to support you in your efforts. I tell everyone that this is my favorite podcast and kudos to you. Plural. She's saying to both of us, um, are well-deserved warmest regards. Margarita. And then in parentheses, Margie. So shout out to Margie. Thank you very much yeah. for listening. Thank you for supporting. Thank you for the kind words. Um, that was very kind and we appreciate it greatly. Thank you to you. And shout out to your dad, who sounds like a great guy who has buns of steel. Affirmative Murder is brought to you by Hormone Harmony. Are you going through menopause or maybe perimenopause? I've spoken to some of the most powerful women in my life who are experiencing menopause and they tell me how difficult it is to find comfort in their own bodies. And I've been recommending Hormone Harmony to them all. Hormone Harmony is an all-in-one hormonal balancing solution for women of all ages. Hormone Harmony isn't just a supplement for women going through perimenopause, menopause, or postmenopause. It's become a phenomenon. Women cannot stop talking about it all over social media. Happy Mammoth, the company that created Hormone Harmony, is dedicated to making women's lives easier. And that means using only science-backed ingredients that have been proven to work for women. They make no compromise when it comes to quality, and it shows. For a limited time, you can get 15% off your entire first order at happymammoth.com. Just use the code AMP at checkout. That's happymammoth.com, and use the code AMP for 15% off today. All right, let's get into one more. This may be our last one. We'll see how long it takes to get through, and if it is, you know, a juicy one, then this will be our last email of the episode. Again, affirmativemurder at gmail.com, T-F-T-H. So, yeah. So anyway, this email says, TFTH, the time my ex-best friend kidnapped me. Best friend kidnapped you. Ex-best friend. Okay. Well, at the time, it was a best friend. Yeah, right. Or maybe they weren't. Maybe that's why she got kidnapped. We will find out, huh? Hmm. So, hi, Alvin and Fran. There's an exclamation point there. My name is Megan. There's a lot of exclamation points. You can say my (laughs) name and all those who who are involved. I don't care, LOL. Yeah, Meg- Megan's coming in with that big energy, and I like it, and I appreciate it. Now, first, I quickly wanted to address something Fran said in a recent episode. When someone asked about a blunt being laced with opiates. Okay. Fentanyl is actually an opiate, and it is used in the medical field, but in much smaller doses than when abused on the street. I right. don't know what you asked, but... Me either. Yeah, I don't, or I don't know what you said. Is it still addictive, though? The matter of the dosage, is it still addictive? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, maybe, maybe not. A, maybe it depends on the dosage. Okay. I don't really know what she's answering. I don't, I don't remember what you said, but maybe. I don't know. But thank you for that piece of knowledge. We appreciate that. But it is being used in medicinal ways in hospitals and in, in, in medicinal uh, ways, turning people to stone. <laughs> Look at your face. What are you talking well, about? What did I say? Medicinal. Medu- that's I mean like medical, right? It's medical. Med- it's medicinal, but you know. Medi- oh, yeah. You got what I'm Medusa saying. was a Greek, anyway. a Greek villain who turned people to stone when she looked at them. So that's why from I who? said we turned to stone. From? It's Greek, is that like from a Greek, uh, Greek mythology? You know what? Is that like a superhero or something? Sure. Yeah. No? Yeah, something You like know, that. I just saw, you know, there's a villain called the Condiment King. Condiment? 
Yeah. Like for ketchup and mustard and mayonnaise? Yeah. No. Is it DC? Because DC has a lot of dumb. It is DC. Yeah. There's a, show said, huh? on, there's a show on HBO Max now. I haven't checked it out. It's called Kite Man. It's a cartoon, wow. but it's a, a, a DC character. I guess it's he's DC? like, he flies a kite or something. I don't know. That's he's, a condiment king. The hell? He drowns you in ketchup and mustard and mayonnaise. He got like, he got like tanks on his bag. He got like ketchup full and mustard of, guns. Full of condiments? Full of ketchup and mustard. That's just silly. Yeah. And that person should never be brought to life. But I will, you know what? I take that back because the John Cena show, even though that superhero is, he's like a, he's like an entertaining one. He kind of is like, um, kind of Deadpoolish or like um, Hawkeye. The John Cena yeah. show, that's a DC show. I can't remember his name. The Patriot or something like that. Okay. It's, it's silly. So the Condiment King could be a funny show, but yeah. I don't want to see anybody do something where they you're supposed to take this guy serious, <laughs> like people yeah, trembling in their boots and yeah. the because the Condiment King showed up. I'm gonna drown you in. You take that. Danny McBride, you make him the Condiment King. I'm in. He's like, yeah, motherfucker, I'll fucking uh, shoot mustard in your eyes, bitch. Fucking <laughs> right between the eyes. I'm like, I'm in on that. I'm in on like Danny McBride, cocky. That's it, got you, Condiment no, King. That. Ineffective, that. but somehow gets the job done every time. Somebody slips on the ketchup, breaks their neck, and he's like, "Yeah, fucking did it, save the day." Um, but yeah, but yeah. Anyway, medicinal. Continue. Saying. Sorry. So fentanyl is medu- medicinal. Yeah. Uh huh. What is it? Tell me what it is. Get for your real. point. No, tell me what it is for real. It's medici- medicinal. It's medicinal. Yeah. Medicinal. But so fentanyl but is used medicinal. Medicinal and, and, and medicinal purposes as far as in a hospital. It's been, I thought that fentanyl was just like somebody found out about this highly addictive drug that's somebody super found powerful. a new element and, and it was like, just like was fucking and just started yeah just started, just been, I didn't know it was like no it's been, it's been used in hospitals yeah they were but it also people still started stealing from pharmacies streets. and hospitals and stuff yeah yeah, yeah for sure okay I didn't know that mm-hmm. that's new gotcha but this okay. but does he? It's Pedusino. Hmm. Um, anyway, here's my story. So when I, when I was in EMT school in my early 20s, I met and became close friends with a girl named Emily. After we finished, I'm guessing she means school. Well, let me ask you a question first before you continue. Is 20 a good age to meet new friends? 20? 20. Yeah, that's still young. Yeah. You're going out and stuff. Yeah, that's still. I mean, like a close, this is my best bud type. I feel like you meet though. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, I, maybe I just kind of compare our friendship to a lot of people because I go like, nah, and a bro, lot of people I, I know. A lot of people, I've known them since yeah. before I was, you know, in my teens. So like, I don't have a lot of new friends in my twenties where like I keep, I just yeah, keep you in contact. Care about? Yeah, no. <laughs> um, no, I think this is rare, bro. Most people meet friends, their closest friends. They meet like in college, um, or uh, yeah, in their. I think early twenties is where a lot of people meet their their inner circle lifelong friends like the people gotcha. that okay you know that they that because when you're in your 20s you are more fully formed so you might have people that right. you're friends with from when you were 10 that's like we don't have anything in common but like we're friends and we'll always yeah. be friends because it's like more it's deeper than friends but then I there's friends you. that you yeah. meet because like we both love to play racquetball yeah and i didn't like racquetball when i was a kid but now grown-up me loves racquetball and i like to watch star trek movies and shit and now my friends that I met in my 20s reflect that. That's true. That's 30 true. is yeah. no. I'm not meeting anybody and telling them about, <laughs> like, family drama and shit. You're not getting any of that shit out of me. How did we meet? We met at a, you know, a sip and paint. Then we're sip and paint friends now or whatever yeah. the fuck. You know, but, like, like going any deeper than that, like, nobody that I met in my 30s, I don't even really meet people now. I don't, we, it's all quick casual you know I'm, it's all one and done for the most part right. we have a great time yeah. with little flings at a bar I go talk ha <laughs> the game you know LeBron is all time leading we have one I right. can have one of the most passionate conversations in the world with somebody oh, and never talk to him again and I'm not accepting your friend request on Facebook yeah. <laughs> not at all. let it go bro it was a moment that we were we, two ships passing in the we night bro we time, had a good bro. time was... we, I bought you a beer don't find me on Facebook cause anybody in that kind of you have no chance of being like a godfather of my child there's no we're not going to get close. Enough. It's just not going to happen. I got walls up. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, so this 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 uh, emailer is in their 20s, and they met and became friends with the person, a girl named Emily. Uh, uh, she goes on to say, after we finished, I was living with my boyfriend at the time who owned his own house. Okay. How old was he? Hmm. And she was 20? She was 20. 20. Sounds a little age gappy. Hmm. Okay. But we're all, you're 20, you know, illegal, legal age and everything like that. Or he's on his shit. 
Let me not take anything away from this dude. Might be 23 years old and just on his shit. Maybe a YouTuber. Maybe <laughs> she was dating Jake Paul. Uh, so uh, she would come over almost every weekend and often stayed over Saturday nights because my ex was a cop. Okay. Um, and worked overnight. So he was a cop. Got you. So he wasn't home. I'm like, what does that have to do with it? How did yeah, that? He wasn't home. Hmm. I'm thinking this guy might have been like 30. Which, hey, okay. God bless. You know, Leonardo <laughs> DiCaprio's out here doing. You know, he's a freak bull. He has, so, like, a, yeah. he has like an age limit. Yeah, they're like 24 and he's like 50. Yeah. But the freakest bull of them all, that man uh, down there in uh, Foxborough, uh, Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick. Okay. He's I, like, I thought he was about to say Robert Kraft, but yeah, Bill Belichick. Oh, he, oh well, I mean, <laughs> Robert Kraft is, is the, he's like the final boss of freak bulls. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> the freak, yeah. he's the freak bull the boss. Final boss. Uh, but B- Bill. Bill Belichick is like 77 years old and his girlfriend's like 22. Yeah, I just, it's, I don't, I'm not the one to call to judge looks at all. But some of them was like, clearly, You bro. know what's up. <laughs> and that's my whole thing is like when people make these think pieces, I'm like, we all know what's up, bro. I mean, I don't know, bro. It's, you got to respect the hustle. I don't know. I can't knock the hustle, right? She's a legal consenting age and she, yeah. she you know, she might want a Lamborghini Yaris. Yeah. I can't knock her for that. And and Bill Belichick, he just wants some companionship. Why does it need wants, to be with a twenty two year old? He wants a little trophy. He wants a little cute right. little things. Come. He comes like, hey guys, oh. what are you doing? And, yeah. and they're all smoking cigars and being like, damn, sh- damn, Bill. And yeah. this is a very nasty scene that I'm painting, but very nasty. she signed up for it, and I'm sure she's being compensated very well. So, of course, he is. I don't know. It it is a nasty age gap. It's, na- it's nasty, but we know what's up. Right? Like, does that matter, I guess? I don't know. To some people, it will. To some people, it won't. To me, it matters where I go, I, it, I see what I she's mean, doing. It, it does matter. It's it. like, why get all upset? If you know what's about up. Age, it's like, you know what's up. <laughs> That's my thing. Like, I don't know. Why, why are you getting upset about it if you know? Like, come on. She's just trying to get a I hours. get people being more upset about a Leo, Leo DiCaprio or something like that because you go... Oh, you like girls who are not women yet. Like, you like girls that are like, they, they, they're they yeah. enamored he, by your stardom. Right. And, and he reads up. And he, he's yeah, like, and he's 25? like, oh, 25. Yeah, yeah, man, contract's up. Yeah, you know, I'm going, I'm going to get the <laughs> That's new. gross. That's, That's nice. gross. Bill Belichick is almost something old and funny and kind of sad yeah. to her. Like, he's just lonely. Yeah. He wants a little pretty girl next to him, be in a bikini when he goes out to his, he's a lonely in his mansion. And he just yeah, wants to look out money. the window. He wants to, he wants to look out the screen door and see something pretty tanning on the yeah, man. That's it. But Leo's his like index, his nah. little index ring. With his little index ring. Yeah, you know that's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's all it is. You know what I mean? So, but a guy like Leo or somebody else, you know, yeah. that's more viable, like forties and fifties. You go if you're forty and you like twenty year olds, it's for this weird control, yes. father figurey control, you know, domination type of thing. Bill Belichick, I look at it more like, oh, well, you know, he's just lonely, and she's like, and I'm, uh, we met on a sugar baby site. And I told him I need an allowance of forty thousand dollars a month. He agreed, and so I'm his girlfriend. They met at like a, a, a Rick Rubin uh, all white party. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> what are we saying? Where, where are we going with this? What are you trying to say? <laughs> what? Mm. Just say. that's what. Hey, that's where they hang. They go. That's what. That's the, that's the spot that to is, be, right? That's the spot to be for some. All right. Some pe- okay. Some people call it the, the elite. <laughs> the elites. Hey. What man? What's the look, man? <laughs> Come on, tell I didn't me. know you're up on that. I'm, not, I'm just gonna move on. Yeah. I didn't know. I didn't know you were. I didn't know you go down those rabbit holes. I just. I didn't know. Yeah, man. I just. I'm sure they just I, all have a great time at the all white party. I'm sure. sure. Just, I didn't even know who Rick Rubin was until like. <laughs> me either. I don't know who he is now. <laughs> we can move on. Still, he sells jerseys or some yeah, shit. I don't know. Like but like, you have a billion dollars. Why, what's why going don't on? We know why he has this much money. <laughs> <laughs> who knew why Jeffrey Epstein had all of, Jeffrey Epstein had enough money to have a private island and then apparently he just worked at a bank. And I don't think an all white, the all white party is just like, no, it's a thing. No, it has that's there's a meaning in some ways. Well, some you know way. somebody else used to throw all, all white parties. Who did he? Yeah. <laughs> so the Uber, uh we can <laughs> get back to the email. <laughs> Uh, um, um so yeah, so her friend used to come over and spend the night at her house because her cop uh boyfriend was working nights um one night my friend emily and i went out to the bars in a neighboring college town for a friend's birthday because they were 20 not legal but you know maybe maybe they had just turned 21 or they have some of them fakies my friend emily was texting an ex-boyfriend all night and was trying to get us to come to a bar in the town and he was like 
I'm sorry. And he was trying to get us to come to a bar in the town he was in almost an hour away. So they're already out in a neighboring no, town. Sir. And now an ex is like to her friend, Emily, yeah. come to this bar. Hour away? My bus is gone. Whatever little uh, hype or energy I have. Yeah, I'm like, already <laughs> out. You know, no. Nah, <laughs> That's too much. We got to get in the car. You know, the buzz. When you start to try to uh, take, take the party to another location, by the you time you get that. there, the party's over with. Now, don't ever try to transport the party, man. It never... It doesn't, it doesn't travel well. Never works out. It's like trying to reheat the McDonald's. Listen, this, this had his life, and it was great, and the fries, mm, mm, salty, crispy, and everything. Now it's tomorrow. We can't bring this back. Yeah. You know that cheese doesn't melt. You know that cheese is plastic. You, you can't, it's never <laughs> going to be cheesy like it was last night because it's yeah. not real. Just like the party scene. None of it's real. It's all a facade. Nobody's having this much fun. The Instagram stories are lies. When they stop filming the, the the bar, it gets mad dead. Nobody dances anymore. It's all a lie. It's Everything just as fake a as a McDouble. McDouble. A McDouble is trash. Never Not only is it trash, if it's you trash. put it in your it's car. It's the worst burger I've ever had in my life. It, if you put it in your car and you go back and put that car in a garage, if you check on that burger in 2046, it'll be the exact same burger. That just shows how durable it is. <laughs> oh, it's just, it's just long lasting. It's words, just the kind of words I, I like to use to describe my food. Durable, long lasting, yeah. um, infinite. It is built to last. <laughs> I don't understand what. Don't throw dirt on McDonald's like that. I'm not, I'm not going to. One I'm thing I'll say that. about McDonald's is it is built to last. Hey, man. What does. Uh, who, who said it? Uh, Ocho Cinco. He's like, it builds that callus. That, it builds that when you eat McDonald's. It definitely it does. Builds that, <laughs> it's that callus in your body it where it's like <laughs> you're strong and healthy. Yeah. So, anyway, so. Emily's trying to, you know, texting the next boyfriend. The next boyfriend's trying to get her to come to another town. Mm -hmm. Megan said, I was not down for this as it was already late. I was pretty drunk and it was far. Yeah. Not happy. Exactly. It came time for us to head home. So my friend Emily ordered an Uber home because I had ordered the Uber to the bar. Fair. Equity. That's a good friendship. Okay. Gotcha. Um, the Uber arrives and starts driving. I noticed that he gets on the highway going in the opposite direction of my boyfriend's house. Mmm, I see what happened here. That's not a good thing. This friend. is a setup. Yeah, yeah. Uh, going in the opposite direction of my boyfriend's house. So I say to the Uber driver, hey, um, sorry, but you're going in the wrong direction. And my friend goes, oh, no, he's not. Uh, we're going to see Matt, her ex-boyfriend. They took an Uber an hour away? She thought they were taking an Uber 20 minutes back to her home where she lives. But yeah, her friend put in this, the address to her ex-boyfriend's bar Without wow. telling, without telling Megan. Wow. Hey. Hence the my friend, my ex, my ex best friend kidnapped me. Yeah. So what I would do is I would go, hey. I'm not mad, <laughs> but when this when we get to where we got to go, just make sure you're ready because I want my face <laughs> soon as we as soon as the car stops. I would like you to. And it's no. It's, there is no talking. Yeah. No. Just nothing. Compromise and discussions. There's nothing. Yes, yeah, sir. I'm not gonna make a scene so in your Uber. Yeah, but I just want you to know: once you pull this <laughs> car over and you say that this yeah. this destination is reached and the ride is stopped, yeah, we're gonna run this outside of the car. We gonna run this because I mean, this is crazy. <laughs> Our drive. Yeah. I told uh, you yeah. no, right? Cool. Say less. And there's no, nothing but else I swear, to be said. Megan, it's not even like nothing else to be said. No, it's cool. It's cool. You want to get to the bar? I hope you, I hope Matt is excited to see you <laughs> with, with two dots all. on both your eyes. Yeah, because I'm black <laughs> in both of them. You're lucky enough that I told you. I'm giving you a heads because up. I could have just, I could have just, just, I could have just duffed you out <laughs> without your knowledge. Easy. We both got heels on. I know to take my heels off. I'm taking my heels off as soon as the door opens up. I'm ready. To, my feet are planning. I could have did that to you, but I spared you. I gave you some heads up. So just be ready to run the fade when we get yeah. to the, when we get to the bar. I don't condone violence, but nah, we nah. You kidnapped me, bro. Gotta, I told you no. I, I, you don't know. You do not have my consent to drive me an hour away at all. So when we get to Ohula Hands or wherever this whatever this bar is called, when we get there, <laughs> just be ready. Just be ready. and I'm taping my knuckles up while I'm telling. Why you got why your face all? I got Vaseline on your face. So I'm, you know, just, I'm just ready. I'm ready. Just getting ready. <laughs> Anybody who fights and makes that noise, you're about to get that work. They know they know a thing or two. Yeah. Man, <laughs> a girl fighting. Wait, you know how to control girl? your breathing? Oh, yeah, I don't know yeah, if I'm gonna fight you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, her friend Emily is like, we're gonna go see Matt, who was her ex her ex boyfriend. So I'm like, Emily, what? Now I'm annoyed. I'm drunk, yeah. tired, and headed in the opposite direction of my bed. So it, this might go the way you just said. That sounded annoyed. That's crazy. We get to the bar, 
that this guy was at. I go pee, and then I beat the shit out of no, him. Uh, <laughs> I go pee, and then come to my friend sitting at the bar alone. I asked where everyone was, and she starts crying and goes, he yelled at me and told me that he never said to come down here, and then he grabbed God. his friends and stormed out. He already had something lined up. <clears throat> yeah, he was just... Man, he took too man long. okay. Let, let's, okay. Now, I would not say I've done the... Mm, I don't know. I've definitely been drunk and popping that shit to an ex. Like, I wish you were here right now. I miss yeah. you. And yeah. so it's possible he was giving it up like that. And then she might have said, where are you? And then he told her where he was. And yeah. because he was popping that shit, she might have took it as, I'm going to go see him. But he might have never explicitly said, come here. True. I'm not going to give him the benefit of that, but she's That's a true. kidnapper. I'm not going to shoot her bail. She stole our friend Megan. So I'm going to say that this guy was probably being on fuckboy shit. It's late. He might be trying to line something up. Like, yeah, I might have my ex try to come through my, you know, I'm feeling like might want to try to hook up with her tonight. Tonight, yeah. Hit her with some shit to try to get her to come to my house if nothing lands at the bar. Yep. And then, boom, she pops up in an Uber on boys' night. Yeah. So, yeah, what do you think? That that sounds that sounds <laughs> yes. very that- plausible. That way he was like, I didn't. I told you where I was. I didn't tell you. To come. Yeah, I didn't say come here. Right. You I asked me where here. I was, and I told you. Yeah, or the guys know what their relationship is like, or was. Hey man, they she, why what's name? Why uh, get rid of her, bro? We're trying what? to have a good time. No, nah, we got it here. Yeah, the whole group like, no, we gone. They just did. And he we got somewhere else to he go. Followed we can go to another bar on the street. He followed his friend. That's because he was both, like, no, come on. Both are possible. Yeah, both are yeah. possible. Somebody's toxic. It might be her. <laughs> if she's doing, she kidnapped yeah, she friend. Kidnapped her no, friend. She, that's that's toxic. They, her, toxic. Her, right, his homeboys looking up him like, bro, let's go. Let's we're, go. We're not no, trying. We're not. Yeah. You end up in jail. We yeah. already see. It's where probably this is going. many many nights she ruined. They ruined nights With together. They probably was like, no. Yeah. So I fear. It, it, it's yeah, her. It, I think it's it her. could be one of the two. <laughs> Those are the two think, possible scenarios it, for sure. But she kidnapped her friend, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the toxic label at least on her. I think it could be both of them. Cause that's crazy. Yeah. No. And you're gonna pay for my Uber back. Cause now I gotta pay the <laughs> hour to get back. No. You're gonna catch this ass whipping. And then I need you to pay for my yeah, Uber. Yeah, I'm both. So of just call it Uber now. So by the time we get here. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and pack you up. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna speed this yeah, up. By the time the <laughs> arrival time of the next Uber, you'll be handled. And then we can go ahead and get that done on your account. But that's you up real quick. <laughs> and then I'm getting my ride home. <laughs> so now, yeah, so Matt yelled at Emily and stormed out. So now I go from annoyed to pissed. Damn, why you go to the bathroom? Damn. Yeah, you, missed, you don't even, yeah, I wish you, you would have seen her get look lame. Because <laughs> then you could laugh at her a little bit like, you didn't came all this way and look at you. He turned you down. That's embarrassing. I didn't even fucking tell you to come here. I didn't even tell you. And walks out, you're like, what? Well, Matt. So we drove an hour to be here for three minutes. Yeah, I'd be pissed too. So she goes, I'm a short, sparky, Puerto Rican bitch. So, of course, I run out of the bar, chase this guy down the sidewalk, and start popping off on him being an asshole to my best friend. Wow. I saw his text messages to her, so I knew for a fact that he did tell her to come downtown or to come mm-hmm. down multiple times. So we okay. take we take back everything that we said. This is why you read before you come to assumptions. But we're doing a show. <laughs> we just were being entertaining. But he did, in fact, tell her explicitly to come where he was. So that does make him an asshole. Yeah. Okay, now, tell me why Emily is now crying and mad at me and telling me to stop yelling at this man for being a piece of shit. So I'm like, you know what? Let's just go home. Wow. Well, I didn't have enough money for an Uber an hour back to my ex's house, and this bitch used the last of her money to get the Uber to see this asshole. So now we're fucking stranded. It was 2 a.m., and the only person I could think of who might be awake and able to give us a ride was my ex's friend Rob, who drove a two-seater Porsche at the time. What kind of twenty? Damn, yeah, these are. She was dating. Yeah. She was dating a guy in his mid thirties. Uh, a two-seater Porsche, or it, well, no, it was a cop. So never mind. I was gonna say, or maybe it was Jake Paul, because <laughs> yeah. Jake Paul definitely was twenty with a friend who had a Porsche, and I don't, and you don't know who he is, but you're just like, yeah, I'm, I'm Jake Paul's friend. I have money to have a Porsche. But yeah. Man, so the homie, the homie, the homie's friend was able to was down to come pick you guys up. Hmm. That's a real one, right? For there. sure. Thankfully, Rob was awake, sober, and willing to come get us. 
So she sat on my lap and the hour drive back to my boyfriend's house, praying we didn't get seen or pulled over. We made it back safely, and needless to say, I'm not friends with this girl anymore. Thanks for reading. I will have the biggest fangirl moment ever if you read this on the show. All the best, Megan. Uh, Megan, shout out to you. That was a crazy story. I wish yeah. that you would have. I'm, I'm, I'm be honest. I'm be honest. I'm a little bum at how that story ended. But that she didn't dust her off? Story. Yeah. Yeah, I just Bad missed. Bunny would not approve of that. Well, you just left her, to, left her at the... Oh, at the bar until I figure it yeah, out. Yeah, Bad Bunny would not approve of that. You mentioned to me that you're Puerto Rican. Bad Bunny, this sounds like a Bad Bunny song. Like you, you, you're, there's exes, there's clubs, there's running down the street. This, this should have ended in somebody getting hands put on them. And then when she sasses you about, don't yell at him. Yeah. She's and now cause. I don't have money to get back and you don't have money to get back and you brought me here? You stranded us. No, we got to run this right now. Yeah. Now you gotta call somebody that gotta come out that way an uh, hour. He probably he's probably good with it because he's driving the Porsche. Like, oh yeah, I went, yeah, I, went to, I, I was looking to get it. I was itching to get a drive anyway. <laughs> yeah, I ain't been out all yeah, day. Yeah, I was I'm looking at the open road. But yeah, no, but, but then yeah. also as a woman, you got this whole thing where it's like, I don't want I don't want dudes out here in the world feeling like I owe them something. You know, it's all kind of stuff like everything. Yeah. I don't know. I, as a woman, I feel like I would be hesitant to ask a man to do a big favor like that that's that, that's that's a big favor even if, even for a friend like hey man i'm an hour awake yeah. can you come pick me up it's two o'clock in the morning can you get up and come get me you know yeah. I, I wouldn't want i wouldn't want uh to cash in that favor for something so dumb but they, she was desperate yeah you know? but i get it oh i get you it didn't leave sure. her out there I, you didn't leave her out there which is good which is a, it's still a good friend for sure it's still, it's still a good friend move you didn't leave her out there stranded at, stranded somewhere she don't know where she right. is so so she did the right thing i still would have packed you know, her up a little j- bit it's all jokes you, yeah, I can still, you can still we can still both ride in rob's porsche and you got a black eye yeah a little busted lip right. you know still live yeah yeah a little missing teeth a little chick yeah, teeth it's all, all right. good um but no nah, shout out to megan that was a great story i do also wish you would have put hands on her but it's all good you know you know how to get away from toxic people so you still made the right move. Um, you got away from right. that person because clearly their best interest is not with you. Yeah. But was that but was that the reason why you guys mm. ex friends though? Yes, Megan, please follow up because if that wasn't the straw that b- broke the camel's back, I would love to know what that moment was. And if it's yeah. more entertaining because I, than I just don't this story. S- yeah, I just don't see I get that's huge. It's she, a red flag. Right. But I don't know if it's friendship. That's something I feel like that's something you can kind of like get past and laugh at. Five years from now. I would agree. I don't think that that yeah. was what I just read was a friendship ending story. Now, if it's yeah. a red flag and now you start to notice, you know, every time we go out to lunch, she doesn't reach for her card to pay. You start to like make might make tallies. So that might have yeah. been the moment that the great awakening. And then she started yeah. to notice like you're a bad friend. So it might yeah. not be anything interesting enough. That happened. She might have this might have just been the moment she goes, oh, let me I don't know if this is the friend that I think she is. And a right. bunch of little things might have happened that made her back away. Yeah, send some uh friends, some bad friend stories. I would love to hear that. Ooh, I feel like that's some new. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. That would be interesting. That'd be a whole nother wor- uh uh wormhole to go down of like terrible friends. I remember we did we did a story. Uh, we read one. Somebody sent one in. Like uh, somebody got in a fight at Christmas and ruined Christmas. That was a crazy oh, one. Yeah. Um, so it's all yeah. kind of bad friends out there. So bad friend stories as well. Affirmative murder at gmail dot com. Tfth. Get them in. We'd love to hear from you. And um, yeah, man, that that's gonna be our last one of the uh, of the evening. I um, uh, hope you guys enjoy the stories that we told this week. Um, shout out to everybody involved. And uh, yeah, Fran, what was the lesson? What was your big takeaway from this episode? Ooh. Oh, I know what mine is, Lashonda. This that's easy. Congrats to her. Oh, congrats to her. Congrats. Where's the? Um... I need the. Pl- I need the applause. She went on and. Yeah. This episode is dedicated to her. Yeah. For go ahead and just being like, what is up? Mm-hmm. And now she's in a great relationship. I would assume they're going to knowledge. They're going to, on a trip. I hope you guys enjoy or enjoyed it if you already went, mm-hmm. whatever. I hope you ate beignets. I, I'm proud of her. Yeah. Shout out to Lashonda. Shout man. out to her. Sometimes you just got to pop out and ask somebody what's going on with the, the status of our relationship. Sometimes you have to just push the envelope. Is that like, is that. That's a saying. That yeah, sometimes you just got to okay. push the envelope. Right. Sometimes you got to open the envelope, go. see what's going on on the inside. There you, you go. Know? I like yeah. that. Sometimes you just got to um, cut the cheese because you'll know if the cheese is... Not fart, but... Okay. But no, like... let's take that back. Sometimes you just got to... Okay. 
um, bake the apple because sometimes an apple can be hard and then when you cook it, it becomes soft and you learn more about the inner workings of the apple. Got you. So sometimes you just got to do that. Sometimes you just have to peel a layer of the onion. Shrek. To get to the core. Mm-hmm. Cause yes, yeah. cause, yes, because much like an ogre, an onion is layered. Um, so yeah, yeah, so LaShonda, shout out to you. Shout out to everybody that, you know, is uh, going through transitional periods in life and their relationships and uh, everything like that of the sort. And if you would like to expound on those things, murder at gmail.com, T-F-T-H. Please. We'd love to hear about it. We'd love to talk about it. We'd love to help you resolve it. I've been Alvin Williams, Fran, and uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next time.